from Midtown Manhattan. The Cube's live coverage of Big Data NYC, a Silicon Angle Wikibon production. Made possible by Hortonworks, We Do Hadoop, and Wham Disco, Hadoop Made Invincible. And now your co hosts, John Furrier and Dave Vellante. Okay, we're back here live at Big Data NYC. This is the wrap-up of the show, uh, day three. This is theCUBE, our flagship program. We got the events, extract the signal from the noise. In this case, we created an event called Big Data NYC. Um, we came out, came to New York to cover Hadoop World for the fourth straight year now. It's Strata plus Hadoop World. Cloudera uh, signed the show over to O'Reilly Media. We are not inside the Hilton. It's right behind us next door. We're surrounding it, and all the thought leaders are coming into Big Data NYC. It's been a great week. I'm joined with Dave Vellante and Jeff Kelly. Guys, what a fantastic week. We launched a company. We broke exclusive news. We had a book signing on the, on, on the Cube table. Cube party. Cube party. We had commemorative giveaway. You got shot glasses with the Cube logo. First ever. It's first for the Cube, Dave. It's a, a great, great uh, moment. We're proud to, to be here. And, and continue our independent coverage of events. And uh, we wouldn't be possible without the sponsors, Hortonworks and Wendisco, with some help from MapR. These are the guys that support the community, as, as uh, was said in the cube here. No, no community, uh, no, no one company is bigger than an active community, and the big data community is very active. It's, it's early, it's robust, it's growing. There's business to be made. And we had the CTO of Acteon said, quote, there are many kings in this, in this land. There's plenty of land to go around. So it's a really exciting time. Guys, let's wrap up the, the coverage. Uh, Dave, we'll start with you, uh, my opinion, but we'll start with Dave. Um, uh, your take, three days. Um, we had you know, day one, eight interviews first thing, Monday from three o'clock on, a lot of buzz, HD Insight, Hortonworks, Microsoft announcement, and then a slew of announcements, a lot of commercialization, a lot of technology discussions, what's your take? Yeah, you know, I mean, I think that the announcements thing, this has now become the cycle, right? You're going to have, you know, the Hadoop Summit in, in June, you're going to have Strata in the, in the spring, Hadoop Summit in June, and, and, and Hadoop World in the fall, and you're going to see announcement cycles around that. You know, it's the sort of a cadence that you would expect. For me, John, I want to just review some of the money uh, uh, highlights of the Cube guests, some of the great quotes that I heard. Uh, Mike Hoskins from Actian, he said, the digital data tap has been turned on and it will never be turned off. And then, of course, on, uh, on Tuesday, we had Avi Mehta. Avi Mehta is just an amazing Cube guest. He's always got some great concepts. The one he introduced this time that I've been using all week is, is, is BC and AC before cutting and, and after cutting. Uh, algorithms are free, he said. St the stack wars are far from over, you know, despite what a lot of people are saying. He said Hadoop must be more than a cheap storage platform. We had J Jack Norris on. He said we're helping customers control the fill rate. I just, I love that, that quote. Uh, the big story, according to Merv, is choices. Merv, Adrian, fantastic guest from Gartner. Uh, he said that the bumper sticker, when you asked him, John, what's the bumper sticker of this show? He said, from whither and why to how and who. And then Hillary Mason said, had, you know, she gets a lot of questions, are, you know, hum are humans going to be replaced by, by machines and data? She said, look, A-B testing tells you which choices make the most sense when. They don't tell you which choices you should test. What should A and B be? And then uh, Bill Schmarzo, the dean of big data, said big data is challenging conven conventional thinking regarding how non-analytical business users will be using analytics. That, to me, is the holy grail of, of big data. And finally, Sharmila Mulligan talked about this intelligent data harmonization with, uh, with ClearStory and what they're doing. So, you know, a lot of innovation, um, still not enough applications, but uh, a lot of growth. And so, John, that's my, my takeaway. What, what do you have? Well, I mean, I think one of the things that's clear is that you have the old world, Oracle, the Teradatas of the world, and you have the new school, Hortonworks, and uh, ClearStory, Plat4, and, and VI companies. The, the big story to me is, is, is watching this over four years is the rise of the data platform, and I think Amr Awadal from Cloudera pointed out that it's a platform, it's an operating system, it's going to be it's going to be a big picture. Merv Adrian from Gardner said, it's not just about how to do it, it's about the data center. Again, we, again, connect the dots here in the cube, and we are telegraphing out that the trajectory will go right back into the enterprise as the enterprise is transforming their, their architectures. That's going to set the table, in my opinion, for an explosion of big data applications. I think what happens with software-defined networking, software-defined virtualization, 
is going to clearly enable the hybrid cloud is here. That's the preferred path. It's confirmed by both Amr Awadala, co-founder of Cloudera, and Merv Adrian. So the cloud real construction that's going on that we've been reporting in other events and other verticals will influence and be a catalyst for big data. Two, the, the business intelligence, the, the advanced analytics is the killer app for big data. Just like email became the killer app for the internet, analytics in some form or the other, helping humans be better, helping people make better choices, using social data, the tap of big data, the age of big data that was talked about earlier is another big story. Not data warehouses, it's, it's, it's the data platform. So it's the business intelligence transformation to advanced analytics will be a tsunami of, of uh, user value. And I think that's going to drive that. And again, as the cloud matures, on-premise, off-premise cloud, hybrid cloud, you're going to see big data apps take center stage in the next few years. That's exciting. And, and then and finally, the business model of open source is very viable. You know, we've always been watching this day from day one when Pat Gelsinger said there can't be a red hat for Hadoop. Hortonworks is executing, they're not wavering. It's clear that there's a business to be had in open source, they're executing on that. And you know, I think that points to the fact that there's not a lot of distrust. People want pure Apache, they want some support. Cloudera's picked their path. Again, the market's maturing. And on top of that, you have Pivotal, right? Pivotal trying to put the pieces together, building on Greenplum, really their only asset they have right now that's in market doing anything of value for their customers. They're building on Hawk. They're going to fill out the white spaces in the platform. We're going to watch Pivotal specifically. And again, that's going to be the Merit story. And we're going to see if they can pull it off. And again, Cloud Foundry uh, is going to go up against OpenStack. It's going to go against AWS. Uh, another quote I would add that to, to the, the repertoire that you last mentioned was Amr Awadal said, OpenStack's like Android, and he mentioned Cloud Foundry, but then you clarified and said AWS is more like the iPhone. That's what we're seeing. We're seeing that kind of a landscape. Um, the iPhone has proven that kind of business model will work, as well as Android. So I think we're going to live in a, in, in a world where there'll be both, Dave. OpenStack clearly is driving that on the cloud side. Again, this is going to map right into the data world, and I think ultimately the data platforms will drive a lot of the analytics. Jeff, what's your take? Well, I think uh, you know you guys hit on a lot of great points there. Uh, you didn't leave me much, <laughs> much to analyze, but we'll throw uh, you yarn. <laughs> <laughs> well, yarn. I think that was one of the big, certainly one of the big things here is, is talking about the data platform, as you mentioned, and, and the key innovation, or one of the key innovations, I should say. There's several, uh, but one is making Hadoop a, a multi-application platform, so you can do multiple, uh, multiple uh, tasks with it, whether it's uh, search, uh, analytics. Uh, ad hoc analytics, ad hoc queries, machine learning. Uh, we, we, we heard a little bit about uh, integrating uh, Storm with Hadoop that's coming in the future. Uh, to do streaming analytics makes sense of data streaming into your organization, your enterprise in real time. Uh, so that is uh, well, one of the key storylines for me. The other one I think, uh, you mentioned some of the big players, the old school Oracle and Teradata, and I think now that, to me, the, the Hadoop players have really stepped it up a notch. They've got their game together. Um, they're going to market in a very smart smart way, each in their own way. But they, but they're they're very much uh, you know they they're no more they're no longer just these little scrappy startups. They are they still got that scrappiness, but they've got you know the adults are there as well, and they're, they they know how to go to market and, and, and start selling these products. So I think you're going to start to see uh, the big players, the Teradata's and the Oracles of the world, start to take notice finally. I should say that I shouldn't say finally about Teradata because they have noticed and they have. Uh, they've got their partnership with Hortonworks, of course. But uh, what, what I mean is uh, the success of the Hadoop distribution vendors is going to start rubbing up against the uh, the traditional EDW database players. They're going to start to take notice. Um, I, I think we're going to start to see rumblings of either acquisitions or uh, real pushback from some of those vendors. I mean, there's been some, some not so great uh, quarterly results from Oracle and Teradata, and part of that, I think, is they're seeing competition now uh, coming from the Hadoop uh, market. So, you know, I think that those two markets are coming to a head. It'll be interesting as uh, Hadoop continues to develop uh, the capabilities and as the Hadoop players mature, start selling into some of these accounts that are, that, uh, that are you know, replacing Oracle and Teradata. We'll see how it plays out, but I think it's going to be an interesting uh, next uh, 12 months. So in connecting the dots, we mentioned a little bit of the data center, how we're kind of teasing that out, we're kind of bringing that to the table a little bit. And there's kind of some methods of my madness here, David. I want to go to Dave Vellante on a comment here. Um, a surprise to me in the show is the rise of the relevance of WAN Disco. 
And when Disco has this nonstop Hadoop positioning, which is great marketing for essentially continuous operation, continuous availability, high availability, um, and they're bringing that, that concept down where horizontally sharing workloads across is a key. And they want to ask you, we had Pivotal on with, uh, with uh, when just when I asked Pivotal, you know, EMC has high availability, why aren't they working with EMC? And they're you know, smiling. Um, Pivotal's really agnostic. They, they're going to be like VMware was. They're going to go work with a lot of folks that make the solutions. So, so Dave, the, the, the WAN disco rise of relevance. What's your take on that? Why, um, why are they? Why were they such a hot topic at the show this year? So I remember when WAN disco came into the the Wikibon offices, and you know you can imagine we get inundated right with with vendor briefings and. You know, quite honestly, 90% of them are just, just another vendor briefing, right? When Disco came in, and for some reason I walked in the room, met these guys, it was a big crew, you know, and we have a small office at Wikibon, and these guys started to describe what they did, and I said, wow, this sounds like a really hard problem that you're solving. And then I remember meeting some of the, the tech athletes at Win Disco, you know, guys like uh, Gigan, Gigan and Kaz, and right. And they started to describe, you know, essentially what is a, an age-old problem in computing, which is speed of light. If you have distributed data all over the place and you have to, you know, protect it and make it continuously available, how do you do that uh, over long distances? You could do it in short distances, but the problem is if you get something like, as Jagain was saying, Hurricane Sandy, everything gets wiped out. If you do it over long distances, you lose data. It's a really hard problem that they're solving. So what they did, again, going back to Abi Meta's, you know, before cutting, after cutting, after cutting, they did a Hadoop-based continuous availability system right in the Hadoop file system that understands distributed, geographically distributed data. It, it reminds me of some of the magic that Google's doing with Spanner, where they're using atomic clocks to figure out when the data is actually going to get there, even though it's over geographically dispersed distances. Very hard problem. So what EMC has solved that question you asked was fantastic. What EMC historically has solved is really, you know, on Wall Street, doing a data center on, in New York, in Manhattan, and one you know, across the Hudson in New Jersey. You know, pretty good protection. Saved a lot of people in 9-11. Didn't, didn't help with Sandy. You had, had, had to use other techniques for Sandy. So the rise of Wendisco is a function of, we hear it all the time, Hadoop needs to be made enterprise ready. One of the aspects of enterprise ready is, it's, is it, question, is it continuously available? Yes or no. Okay, how is it achieved? And what happens when something goes wrong? And when Disco has really solid answers for every one of those, so very impressive, and their growth rate is just enormous from a small base, but their stock price is going through the roof. Well, I think they solve a really critical problem, and it's a really, if fairly easy problem, really, to show the ROI on. If you've got a, an application that's a consumer-facing application, for instance, that's, that's running on top of Hadoop, if it goes down for five minutes, you can, you can calculate what that's going to cost you. And it's, it's, a really, it's a really straightforward value proposition uh, to a really, really important problem. The other thing that I want to bring up, and Jeff, I want to get your take on this, because this came up multiple times, the, uh, the importance of what Yarn means, meaning you know, Yarn is one of those sort of aspects of the big data platform that uh, it's kind of confusing. If you're not a tech geek, you know the nuances of what it means. Uh, but MapReduce has been a core part of the Hadoop platform, and what Yarn does is creates the ability to not to be dependent on MapReduce. That becomes a real disruptive enabler to create more innovation. What's your take on that? Um, is it, are you seeing consistent feedback from folks out there? What, what's your take on the Yarn situation? Well, I think Yarn is, is the concept is, is critical to the, to the, the overall success of Hadoop as the, uh, you know, the, the core enterprise data platform. Uh, for, for organizations out there, uh, Yarn itself uh, is you know very impressive, but it's really the first you know the first round. Um, they have uh, Arun at Hortonworks who really leads development of Yarn. It's a community effort, but uh, Arun really kind of uh, is one of the core developers. Um, you know, we spoke a little bit about kind of the roadmap, and there are several phases uh, to go. Um, just for a quick example, so uh, the idea is that. Uh, Yarn essentially allows you to do multiple types of applications on Hadoop rather than uh, only batch analytics using MapReduce. You can now do things like uh, using Hive, uh, do more SQL interactive type queries. Um, so essentially what Hive uh, GA, the current GA version does is it, it kind of uh, masks some of the MapReduce happening, but when you do a Hive query, it's still running MapReduce in the background. It's much faster than it was before Yarn, but it's still MapReduce. So down the road in future uh, versions of, of Yarn, they're going to actually move it off of, uh, of MapReduce and you're going to get even better performance. Uh, the other thing that I mentioned earlier was integrating Storm into uh, Hadoop. That's also on the Yarn roadmap. 
Uh, that's part of that project, bringing those kind of things in. So really, the, the, the fundamental, if you're not a, you know, a tech geek, the, the, the critical thing to understand is that it makes Hadoop a, well, a more well-rounded platform uh, that can serve multiple needs, multiple applications. Yeah, again, in talking to the president, Herb Knitz from uh, Hortonworks, what's great is, is that you can see the business model taking off of, of big data, and obviously operationally driving top-line revenue and building a marketplace for for vendors to do business and, and do commerce and share value and get paid for it is critical. Um, however, you know these shows always bring out kind of the the the, the new shiny object or the new trend that we want to kind of keep an eye on. And and I want to get your take on this, but I'll share you my, my take first. Um, that is, is that you know we heard from Hillary Mason, who's now a data science and resident at Excel Partners, and we also heard Ed Dunbell, who's a uh, principal at uh, Silicon Valley Data Science, also co-chair Strata. Uh, who announces this will be his last show co-chairing. So, he, he, you know, hats off to Ed and Alistair, mainly Ed. Great job, great run, fantastic conference, a big fan. Um, is the rise of data artistry, right? The art and science, and Hillary Mason was like, yeah, there is art to it. You know, it's gotta be the creative side. It's, it's, it's both, it's, it's really gonna enable a lot of people to, 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 to add value. You don't have to be a, a, a data jockey or a Python coder to be that killer data science, to be that next Billy Bean in reference to Moneyball. Uh, and two, Ed Dunvell brings the user experience to the table. Create predictive analytics, do things in, in thinking about the human being in mind. So you're going to start to see the instrumentation of the universe, and this is something that we geek out on with CrowdSpots, our platform, um, and CrowdChats, which, you know, exciting to say we did two, two uh, three this show. Uh, very exciting. So bringing the human element, that to me has got my, uh, got my radar on big time in that area, and that is that it's not just the math, it's the science behind it, I mean the art behind it and the science. Um, Charmilla talks about people with iPhones not having to do queries, so, you know, this kinds of discovery with data is going to bring new algorithms, graph computation, machine learning, community detection, all these things kind of that we, we talk about uh, internally all the time. Um, so to me, that got me, got me kind of uh, got intoxicated a bit. Well, what's your guys, what, what out there got you excited that's, that's off the quote, blocking and tackling business marketplace side of things? Well, kind of building on what you, what you were mentioning, what uh, you know, Hillary mentioned, the data artistry, but also the, the skills that you need to be a good data scientist, and one was the, the, the communication skills, which is key. I think that gets overlooked a lot. Uh, ultimately, what you're trying to do as a data scientist is tell a story. You're trying to uncover some insights, and you've got to communicate that to uh, folks who are going to actually use th those insights to make decisions. And part of the, the key there is being able to tell a story, whether it's um, you know through what kind of visualization you choose, how you choose to introduce that insight to to end users. So uh, for me, that's really what, what what where it gets interesting when it comes to data scientists um, and some of the innovations that they're adding. To me, John, uh, really two things. One is, and I always love to bring up Nick Carr and you know, how he was so wrong, and you know, I know it drives you crazy, but. <laughs> but but it, it's, it, but it reminded me of when whoever made the statement said every great invention has been has been made you know every every scientific discovery has been made I mean it's, it was absurd to say that technology can't be a sustainable source of competitive advantage and and if you look at technology and and, and the, the technology of data it is becoming increasingly and increasingly a source of competitive advantage now will that moderate over time okay maybe everything goes in cycles but that to me is really exciting that practitioners are creating more value around data and the use of technology, the application of technology, than the technology industry. That's great to see, because traditionally in the technology industry, a few guys made a ton of money, like Microsoft and IBM and Intel, and a bunch of guys made you know, a lot of money, like Sun Microsystems and HP and others. But, so I'm very excited to see the industry transformation that's going on. The second thing is, I love business models. That the business model discussion that we were having today around Cloudera and Hortonworks and Red Hat, et cetera, et cetera, what is exciting to me is we're starting to get to the point where I think we're going to start to get some visibility, some real visibility on business models because I think you're going to start to see some of these big data companies do, do IPOs. And that's going to allow us to really track this business in a much, much better and more transparent way. Uh, breaking news, just want to, it's kind of coming across the wire, I know it's kind of, kind of not related to big data per se, but you know, talking about cloud. Um, CSC, which we've done a crowd chat with uh, Dan Hutchins, CTO, uh, has acquired enterprise cloud management company Service Mesh. Um, so our friends at Service Mesh just got acquired by CSC. Um, this enables, Holy cow. This enables CSC to continue their transformation for the next IT company. So back to your Nick Carr analogy, um, you know, this spe speaks to a very, very huge uh, uh, issue, and that is orchestration. So 
in the cloud business, it almost mirrors kind of what's going on in big data. We didn't get into too much on theCUBE here, but orchestration is a big issue. And I think, you know, this is going to be a huge win for CSC. Did you say how much? I'm, not, I'm just reading the press release now. No, not, 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 not much. Um, it probably was significant because I know those guys were doing really, really well. Um, certainly a blow to Pivotal. I'm seeing, um, the, sorry, I'm just seeing the number uh, 325 million range is what they're saying. But Great, good outcome for the founders. Frank Martinez, congratulations. Uh, he's the, the founder, friend of ours in theCUBE. Um, great work, they've been done great work at OpenStack. Obviously EMC, I think should have been in the running for this one. I'm surprised EMC let this one go um, for that kind of dough. Well, uh, and CSC and EMC are close partners. I wonder, you know, yeah. if that's how uh, CSC got good visibility on service mesh, who knows? <laughs> um, but again, this is, this is it. I mean, you heard, um, um, uh, one of the Cube guys here, the CTO of Actian, say we bought three companies. People are gearing up, Dave. They're putting their battle gear on. They're putting their they're putting their armies together. Whatever metaphor you want to use, there's plenty of land to go around for many kings. And uh, what I'm excited about, we've said this years ago in, in, in the Cube, in the big data business. It's just going to be a matter of time, where you know there's going to be many fruits on many trees. So I think a lot of people are looking at who to, who to go with, who to play with, who they're going to hang with the kind of karitsus, the kind of the platforms. Again, the service mesh with CSC announcement speaks volumes to that and uh, pretty exciting. Well, John, I, uh, I want to thank you for, uh, for coming up with the idea, you and your team at SiliconANGLE of theCUBE because it's been just an awesome run. And I also want to thank you for the phone call almost four years ago to the day. I was in Dallas, I was at Storage Networking World. You called up and said, hey, we're doing Hadoop World. Get your ass out here. And, four and, years ago, yeah, Dave. And, and I said, John, I really, I got a lot of appointments lined because, okay, hey, you can stay there and hang out and talk storage with your 20 buddies, or you can come meet some new friends. And, and I got in the plane, I had it, we got diverted through DC, I got in at like 3.30 in the morning, you were still up. <laughs> and, uh, so we met, and then we had just a phenomenal week, and, uh, and it's been a great run ever since. I'm really privileged to be part of this community, part of the Hadoop World community, and I uh, really want to thank well, you. We got for some that. new stuff, Dave. We got the crowd chats. Go to crowdchat.net. It's been public select beta for only uh, a couple months. Uh, we're testing it in some of the B2B clients, but also check out uh, CrowdChat. CrowdChat's the new innovative engagement app platform with an integrated application. So we call that the CrowdSpots platform with the integrated application uh, CrowdChat. Uh, fantastic way to communicate in a group setting. It creates a chat room around Twitter and LinkedIn, hence the word crowd, not tweet chat. Allows for threaded conversations, got game mechanics with voting. We love it, we've been using it now, and everyone that, that's using it is, is fantastic. You're going to see a lot more crowd chats, um, so proud to bring that out here, and, and we're going to continue to roll that out. That's going to allow us to do a lot more collaboration, do some social business with folks. Crowd chat, Dave, is, is really to us the next exciting uh, evolution of social business, and that is crowd activated innovation. Crowd activated innovation is the future, and that's activating the crowds and really creating value for each other, the community, and doing it in a way that's in the open, just like open source. So again, I am so excited to be involved in open source, going back to my earlier days coding, and now ultimately here in the social realm, open source principles will continue to thrive um, as we get more connected and instrumented, as we, as we all know, it's going to get stronger. So watch Crowd Chats. Also, we had our first ever Cube of Party event. Uh, sponsored by Horton Works and Wayne Disco. Last night, Dave, I want to thank you for coming, but that was just a tremendous success. We had all of our CUBE alumni there that were, was in town. We had conversations. I saw some deals getting done on the back of a napkin. Uh, big time executives from big public companies talking to startups, CEOs, our friends. Great, great community developing here in the big data world. And again, the CUBE is here for that. So I want to thank you. And this little shout out to all the team here. We had a little bit of power outage yesterday. Uh, knocked us off the air for a couple hours. Uh, we got all those videos, captured all the content. Uh, we just missed a few hours live but we had great sessions Monday, great show. It is the age of big data, it is Big Data NYC. We'll have a Big Data SF coming up probably next, earlier next year. Again, very intimate environment with theCUBE uh, and continue to cover Hadoop World ongoing. Again, in consecutive years, we're going to be here. Uh, this is theCUBE, I want to thank the team. Guys, thank you, Jeff, great job with your analysis. Um, any final parting thoughts, guys, Jeff? Well, so uh, you know, it'll be interesting when we're back here next year. Uh, we uh, the, the the conference itself is moving down the road to the Javits Center, um, so maybe not here at the Warwick, but uh, certainly in the city. And uh, it'll be interesting to see 
how far we develop in the next 12 months in this market. Uh, as I said, I'm looking for uh, some big things from these players. They're starting to mature. Um, and yeah, it's going to be an exciting year. So, you know. And next week we're at IOD, IBM's big, big data conference. Yep. Awesome show last year, second year for theCUBE there. And then the following week we're at AWS reInvent. It's going to be like the Super Bowl. We're really excited about that. Yeah. We got the cloud market covered like a blanket. Obviously storage, you know us. We got that covered as well. Converged infrastructure, we're going to take it to the cloud. Big data, we got that covered. The analyst guys, SiliconANGLE, we'll keep on guys. Great job. And a, a real thanks to, again, Hortonworks and Wayne Disco for supporting our open source independent coverage here at the Warwick, across the street from the Hill where Strata Conference is going on, where Hadoop World, our fourth year here, it's exciting. And you know, Sean Connolly, uh, David Richards, Amar Awadala, Bill Schmarzo, Sh Sharmila Mulligan, Jack Norris, Herb Knutz, uh, we had um, uh, Spotify here, SAP, Ed Dunbell, Hillary Mason, Merv Adrian from Gardner, uh, the folks in the community, we had um, uh, Bob Haynes from Box, with, formerly with PAPS, uh, Microsoft. Just a lot of support from the community. A great, great event, great content, exploding market. We're excited, this is theCUBE. Keep following us, we'll be at, uh, in Las Vegas for our next couple events, and we'll be out on the road. We'll see you at the next event. Thanks for watching, and this is a wrap from Big Data NYC and the Big Apple with uh, Hadoop World and Strata Conference going on this week. Thanks for watching, and all the videos are available on youtube.com slash siliconangle. That's a wrap.